Good morning. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our project, and it's exciting to hear about the other projects this morning. Uh, so our, our major area of interest are, broadly speaking, cognitive neuroscience and neuroimaging approaches to uh, advanced practices and policies in the treatment of um, neuropsychiatric disorders. We work on a huge range of them below, and also issues in education with children. I'm going to present to you some of our work in real time, uh, fMRI neurofeedback. There are a couple of thousand publications, at least, using neuroimaging to understand the brain basis of differences in terms of neuropsychiatric disorders, depression, schizophrenia, others. Almost none of those have changed how patients are helped or treated, and we're very interested in how neuroimaging can directly move us towards helping people uh, with neuropsychiatric diseases. So I'll talk to you about our neurofeedback effort uh, today, give one example. But to tell you the other kind of work we're very interested in are whether neuromarkers, structural or functional brain measures, can predict which patient will benefit from which kind of treatment, an area that's shockingly devoid of, of empirical evidence. So here's the real-time fMRI system. A person lies in a scanner, uh, and they see, for example, a thermometer that tells them how active by fMRI a particular part of your brain is. Now, as you know, that's a few seconds ago in time. Uh, uh, it's not really immediate, but it is the rare opportunity for you to be directly engaged with activity in a part of your brain as you sit in the scanner. So this shows you the magnitude of activation average over the last few seconds. Um, and what we try to do is get people to learn to control activation in a specific part of their brain by giving them this feedback. So their job is to gain voluntary learned control over a particular part of the brain. And um, so our idea is that as we know more and more about which brain areas are compromised in different disorders, we can have rational approaches to say if the amygdala is important for anxiety, let's help patients with anxiety gain control over the amygdala. Uh, in this study with uh, Christopher DeCharms, we were looking at pain and so we gave patient, it, healthy people in this case, sorry, uh, uh, thermal pain, IRB-approved thermal pain. Uh, and this, turns, this is the anterior cingulate. It's one of the areas that's turned on for the perception of pain. And then they would see across the fMRI experiment a thermometer or a similar display that would tell them how active that part of the brain was. And their job was to use that feedback to gain control over that. So this bar here shows the beginning of the experiment is a small bar. That's how well they can move it up or down, their learned control or their voluntary control over activation in that part of the brain. And at first, it's not very strong, but then by the end of the experiment, they've learned to, compared to the beginning, to control activation in that part of the brain. Now, of course, we don't want to just control activation of the bold signal, although it would be a very neat trick if people could shunt blood around <laughs> voluntarily. We want to change the mental processes that are guided or supported by that part of the brain. So what we do is periodically present them with a constant thermal pain, a constant thermal pain, and ask them to rate how bad is it. So the stimulus is constant. But what happens is they just pushed up activation, they rate it as worse. If they just push down activation, they, raise, they rate the pain as less bad. So we're moving around not only the blood measure that, uh, that we're getting, we're moving around, we think, the psychological process that's mediated by that part of the brain. Uh, and in terms of a clinical application, we, uh, in a pilot study, we looked at patients with chronic pain syndrome and found significant clinical gains. We didn't give these patients who report constant severe pain any more thermal pain, uh, but we just had them rate their constant ongoing level of pain. And so this is pilot work, but it takes, it's the kind of work we'd like to do to take advantage of what we know about brain disorders and turn them into direct treatments to help people and, and complement other forms of treatment. Uh, we'd love to have technical and clinical collaborators. There's a lot of issues we're interested in, uh, in, in thinking about uh, brain disorders and how we can make brain measures uh, that, that make a difference in the lives of those patients. Another very interesting area, I think, is cross-language, cross-cultural studies, uh, because many issues, for example, uh, uh, whether it's psychiatric diagnoses on the one hand or have cultural specificity, we'd like to understand what's similar and different across cultures. Uh, and in some areas like reading, the kind of language you have is very important. And lastly, contact information. Thank you.